and I'm in Zenobia's kitchen today. I'm going to make some scones, some, some vanilla scones. Scones are a British shortbread is basically what they are. But you can put different types of fruits in if you would like. Uh, today we're going to put some blueberries and some cashew nuts. And uh, getting started here, we've got two and three fourths cups of flour. Now the flour that I choose to use is this gluten-free flour. And uh, the reason is, is because some people are allergic to gluten. And uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a very good flour. But if you use this flour, there's one thing that you have to do, is you use this xanthan gum, and that actually helps the bread to stick together. Now, if you don't want to use the uh, gluten-free bread, just use a regular flour, and then you can exclude the xanthan gum, all right? Okay, we got baking powder here. We got one tablespoon of baking powder. We got one third cup of sugar. Now you can use white sugar, this granulated sugar, or you can use the brown sugar. It's your choice. I use Himalayan salt. You can use regular white salt if you like, ionized. And that's, and then I do have some cashew nuts here which are ground up. And then um, the blueberries. You can buy these at Walmart. Or you can use fresh blueberries, but they're a little bit messy. So I choose to use the blueberries along with some coconut flakes that we'll put in during the process of making the bread. So right now, and I also have a little bit extra flour here because you might not get the consistency right at first with the liquids. So I wanna have a little bit of flour on hand just to uh, make sure I get the bread good. All right, one other thing I have here is I have another egg and then I have this, uh, this silicone uh, brush that I'm going to use to glaze the scones when uh, I get them ready to go into the oven. All right, so right now we've got our flour, two and three quarter cups of uh, gluten-free flour. We're gonna put our dry ingredients in. Let's go ahead and mix in the, uh, we got the baking powder, then we got the sugar. Just make sure you get it mixed throughout the batter or the flour. And uh, after that, we're gonna put some salt in here. Get that mixed around. You don't want to put too much salt. Okay, just make sure you mix that real good. And then at this point, I also, in the dry ingredients, I'm going to go ahead and open up the, uh, the blueberries. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the blueberries in here also. That way they're all mixed, they're all mixed in. And uh, you know, the blueberries are very, you know, they're dried dried blueberries, but like I say, you can use the, the fresh ones, a little bit messy. But one little package like that, you can mix that in, and there it'll, it'll, it'll come out really nice in the end. So I just wanna mix it up real good at this point. In preparation time, you can figure maybe, uh, you know, mixing these ingredients, maybe 20 to 25 minutes, and then cooking time, you're gonna go at 425 degrees for about 25 minutes. All right, so we got this mixed up real good. I'm going to go ahead at this point and add, I'm not gonna add all, because I wanna use this for the topping uh, before I put it in the oven. So I'm gonna add a few now, maybe half. These are cashew nuts, okay? We eat a lot of these cashew nuts in our, in our family here because uh, my wife is from Brazil. So a lot of, that's where they come from. All right, we got this all mixed up. Now, we're gonna set that aside a little bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and put together the wet ingredients. And the wet ingredients include, we got two eggs. We got um, half a cup of milk. What I choose to use is almond milk. You can use regular cow's milk if you want. Um, but we got, uh, is it, I believe it's a half, uh, yeah, a half a cup of, of milk. All right, you add that in. All right, and then I got vanilla. Use, use two teaspoons, okay? Okay. And pure vanilla extract is what you usually like. To, I don't like to use imitation. I like to use the real stuff. All right, so then we're going to mix this together. I'm going to use my little whisk, and I'm going to mix this together so the eggs and everything is mixed real well. All mixed up, all the egg whites, all the yolks and everything are mixed. All right, then you can let that sit for a minute. 
And now what we got to do, I forgot to say we had an ingredient, we had butter. Would, would I get the unsalted butter? Because there's already salt in the uh, batter. And uh, this is a uh, half a cup. They asked for a half a cup, but it's got to be, if not frozen, it's got to be cold. So it's, it's sort of firm. And then what you have to do is I set aside my wet ingredients. Then I go back to my dry. And now you have to grate this. In order to make these work, you have to do this. You've got to grate this butter into the flour formula. And then I will uh, mix it up and I'll show you how that's done. But I use a simple little grater and you hold it over the top and you just start, you see how it's coming out of the bottom there? And that's what you want. Because that gets mixed into your flour. And that's when you get your hands. Like in Portuguese to say, mão na massa. All right? But you just gotta watch your fingers. All right? But you use, uh, you know, one stick is a, is a, I believe it's a half a cup. And I don't, I don't get the um, salted butter because most of the time your foods have enough salt in them. You don't want to overdo the salt, especially in scones. You can taste it right away if it's too much. All right? Almost got my butter done here. And you want to have it firm because there's, it's very hard to grate if it's, if it's really soft. And you, really, you want it to come out in those strings like that. And I'll show you why. You got to make these a few times to sort of get your ingredients and get, get everything right. I make them about every week, so I pretty well have got this, this down. All right? Just turn it over and clean it out a little bit. Get, just get as much off as you can. A little bit messy, but that's okay. All right, so now you got the you got the butter and you got the flour mixture. Now you got to put your hand in here, and you're going to take this, and you're going to mix the flour with the butter. And you just have to run it through your fingers. And you get all those clumps of butter broken down, but you got to get it equally mixed throughout the process here. There's like there's some butter here. You just squish it down a little bit. We're almost there. But there's one more thing I have to add before I put the, the liquids into it. I want to put this xanthan gum in there. Because if I don't put that in there in this type of bread, it will not stick together and you'll have a real, real hard time. You'll end up having to put a lot more flour. And the xanthan gum makes stick crunch, right? Makes it crunchy. crunchy. Yep. And, and, and it, it makes it stick together. That's the big thing is that you have to get it to stick together. Otherwise, the scones, I don't know, if you're familiar with scones, they've got to be, um, you cook them, it's not like you overcook them, but you cook them to where they're sort of crunchy, and because you don't want them really soft. And they will last, there's a shelf life, I mean, we don't put them in the fridge for maybe three, four days, and they, they, stay, they stay good. Uh, they're good to, to eat with uh, tea, the British, are very, very good at having afternoon teas and then the scone is a big thing for them. Um, I do have apricots, but I'm not gonna put them in this, this recipe, but you could throw apricots, dried apricots. You gotta get dried fruit um, to make it better. I mean, I, you can use the wet fruit, but like I say, it gets a little bit messy. So right now, I got the consistency that I want because the butter is mixed in. Of course, the butter's not melted yet, but that'll happen. That's part of the process when it's cooking. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna get, have to get my um, hands a little bit more dirty. So if you have any rings or, or uh, watches on, just make sure you take those off. And then I just dig a little hole in the center of my batter. I'm gonna wash my hands off just a second here. You take any rings or any, any, anything off because they do carry germs. You just wanna make sure that uh, you wash your hands. And then dry them off because otherwise everything's gonna stick to you. All right? And then you take your bat or your, uh, you take your wet mixtures, you go ahead and pour those right in the center. All right? Oh, you know something? I did forget, but I can put this around the sides, is the xanthan gum. And what I use is two, two tablespoons. It's really, really, really a fine powder. So I put this around here so it gets mixed well when I start. I guess we, I'm gonna be kneading the bread. All right, so those go in there, and that's gonna, you'll see how it sticks together 
once I get going on that. And I'll just take, I'll just go around the side and sort of poke that in. Sometimes you have to add a little bit more, but usually two tablespoons is good. And you only use the scented gum because we are making gluten-free scones. Right. If you want to use your regular flour that you like, then you just you just uh, don't put that in. But it's um, what it is. It's a it's it's healthy, um, but it's it's not the gluten. Gluten and flour. Uh, a lot of people are finding out that they're allergic to it now, and. and and uh, so the option is to use the gluten-free and maybe add a little bit of xanthan gum just to, just to get your bread and, st and, and whatever you're baking to stick together. So right now, I'm just bringing the batter together. I want to get all that flour mixed in. Looks a little, little bit more. Pretty soon I'll have to dive in with my hands. And then I, I form it into a ball, let it rest for a little bit, and then I have uh, parchment paper that I put down on the counter, and then I roll it out. And you'll see how that works. Hey everybody, don't forget to take a, a little second and give me a thumbs up and go to the channel Zenobia Beckel on YouTube and give me a thumbs up for this video so YouTube can share with other people. Thank you. Usually I'm on the other side of the camera, but today this is an English video and Zenobia can do it in English, but this is sort of what I do every, every week is my, uh, is my scones, so I get to get my malanamasa. I get to get, get my hands dirty today. All right, hands are clean. So just you dig in and you just start pulling it together. And it's not the same consistency as a regular bread would be. It will rise a little bit, not as much as bread would, because in bread you put yeast. Uh, what's going to do the the rising factor here is the uh, the baking uh, baking powder, and it, you don't want it to rise a lot, but you do want it to, to come up just a little bit. It might even double its double its size because you'll see how I cut it into uh, pieces, and uh, it, it takes what, 25 minutes in the oven, and it turns out really well. So the main thing here is to get it to, I just gotta get it to form into a ball. Sometimes you might get a little bit dry, then you just add a little bit more milk to it. I think we're okay. So I just take it down inside the bowl here and pick up all the rest of my batter and work it in. And so what you wanna do, you see I, I put the blueberries in before I put the liquids in. Now they're thoroughly mixed throughout the, throughout the, uh, the dough. And you see how it's forming now? I usually like to go like this, throw it into my hand, one hand to the other. Believe it or not, this is mixes it pretty well. This will make, oh, uh, I think it's like 12, 12 scones. But now you go uptown and you buy these scones and they're three bucks a piece. So I mean, really, um, this is like $36 worth of scones right here, and I'm doing it probably, for, you know, when you figure all the products I got here, it's like five bucks. It's not even that much. And then you can sort of put what you want in them. Not everybody sells them. Uh, you can't really get, you get scones at maybe health food stores and stuff, but you're very few places you can actually find them. But it's a British right, thing. So we're just gonna let this um, sit just a little bit, and then I'm going to no, then I'm going to uh, get my parchment paper. All right. Okay, I'm back. Getting set, everything set up here. Got parchment paper that I use down on the countertop. Parchment paper, wax paper are two different things. So uh, if you're going to use your parchment paper also to put in the oven with the scones, uh, then make sure it's parchment and not wax paper. Because I've got non-stick pans, I'm not going to have to use the uh, parchment paper today. All I do is use a little bit of spray. All right. So then, besides that, I got a pizza cutter. I'll show you what that's used for in just a minute, and also a rolling pin. We have to get the, uh, the dough down to about a fourth to a half inch thick. That way it, it'll raise and it'll make some really nice scones. All right, so what I've got here, this is what I was working on before. So we put it in the center, we just push it down. All right, but I try to keep it round as I'm pushing it. Just keep it as round as you can, all right? Come around the sides and just keep pushing them in a little bit. At a certain point, 
you'll have to use your rolling pin. But this, I just like to use my hand to push it down. You're making it like a, uh, a pizza. You're just going to stretch it out so it gets to be about, oh, maybe 12 inches or so. And then that way you can get some 12, you can get at least 12 good uh, pieces of uh, scone. And you can see where the blueberries are coming to the surface. They're all over in there. So it appears that every one of our pieces are going to have some blueberry in them. And that's what you want. All right. You might want to take a little bit of this flour so, you're, so the dough doesn't stick to your, your rolling pin and just rub it on the top. Okay. And then what I do is rather than grabbing these sides, I just go like so. And then you go one side, so you're keeping it even to the other. And it's about three quarters of an inch thick right now. You still want to work it a little bit. Okay. Work it back and then it's got to go out this way a little bit more. And then I'll still try to form the sides so I get a good round piece. Okay. There we go. We're getting to the thickness where we want it. And now I'm just going to form it a little bit. I just go around the sides so I can form it. You can come back and roll a little bit more if you want. You can pat it out on the sides a little bit. Sometimes the center is a little bit thicker. You want to work that out. A little bit more rolling pin action and then we'll be ready to go. You leave them too thick, it's very hard for them to bake in the time allotted. So that, and they might get um, more done on the outside than on the inside. They might burn, but in the inside they're still a little bit raw. So you, that's why you want to get them down to, you know, the quarter inch is, is a good measure. All right. So there we are. So you've got like a pizza size, a pizza size piece of dough. This is your scones. All right. And I always like to work around the sides, make sure they're all uniform. Takes a little bit more time, but okay. Now this is where your pizza cutter comes in handy, and I don't know what any other tool that you could use to do this. You probably use a knife, but pizza cutter gets it straight. So I just cut it all the way down, cut it in half, and you cut it across. You cut it in fourths. Okay. And then you start cutting these in thirds. So you just go all the way across. You meet yourself in the center, and then just keep going. All right. Here's another one. You go down the other side. There we go. All right, I got this one here yet. And these are going to be a little bigger, but now we should have like a dozen. So they're all good. I got a little bit of a berry that jumped out on me. I just take them and push them right back in. All right. So now I want to put them in the pan. So what I do, I just take and spray, just a little bit of spray. And we use the uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil is good for high temperatures, especially over 400 degrees. A lot of these oils that you have, they will, uh, they uh, burn. And you don't want them. All right. So then I use this little tool right here. And I go up underneath, I start removing them. Just take maybe one or two out at a time. And I start placing them on the uh, pan. Okay. But I, t I make them go opposite directions. So you have enough room because they will rise and they get stuck together. You don't want them to stick together. I'm gonna try to get like six on each one. That way I have equal parts. Okay. I think I need to get one more here yet. There we go. All right. So there we are. We're still not done yet. We got to do one more, and then there's a, a little bit of a, a topping, a glazing uh, that we put together, so it browns really nice on top. Okay. And you can see the consistency and the thickness of them. That'll be about double that when you get done. All right, 
You see that? All right, now we got 12. I'll just bring that back over here so you can see a little bit better. And then what I gotta do now is I gotta get things put together for my uh, glazing. So what I do is I take one egg, I break it, and I get a fork. And I mix this up, you gotta make sure you get the egg white, or egg white and yolk, the complete egg mixed up. All right, like that. And then I use almond milk. And uh, you can use any milk you want, of course, but almond milk is, is what we use for this. And I guess I can measure it. Um, I get a tablespoon, a little bit. A little bit over a tablespoon is good. You just want it to, to give it a little bit more, uh, get a little bit more liquidy so it spreads on the tops of the scones nicely. Mix it again, you're done. And you got this nice little brush here, it's silicone. You don't want to use a regular brush. Uh, they have these cooking brushes, but the fibers seem to fall out and they get in your food. And then, so this one here, these are really nice. You can get them anywhere. And then you just take and uh, paint this on. Get it on all areas. If it runs over to the sides, it's no big deal. What this does is just setting you up for a nice uh, looking scone. And get a little bit sloppy here in my. Right. There'll probably be a little bit left over, but yeah, I mean, one egg is what you really need. Okay, go over to this side, finish this one up. Then I'm going to top it with um, some coconut flakes because they'll stick to it at this point in time, it's still wet. And then uh, maybe I put a, spread a few of those cashews that I have left over on it. And then we're going to put it in the oven and in about 25 to 30 minutes we'll be showing you what's going on here and it should come out looking pretty good. Maybe we can have a, a spot of tea when we're done here. Okay, any extra? You can still, it, it, there's really, you don't, you can't overdo this. I mean, the more you have on there, the more glaze you're gonna get. If you don't wanna use the oak, you can actually use whites. Um, you know, so there's a couple options you can make. You can change things up a little bit. I use the uh, coconut flakes. Let's see if it's okay. And I just reach in here. I just grab a few, they're dry. So I just sprinkle them. And coconut is good on everything. So you can't you can't mess it up. That'll bake right into the that'll bake right into the glaze. Some people throw a lot of sugar on these, and I believe it ruins it. I don't know. I mean you could put sugar and sprinkles or whatever you want on them, but um, if you want to eat healthy, stay away from that sugar. All right, so there we're done with that. Now I'm gonna take a few sprinkles of uh, the cashew, cashew, whatever you want to say. And I just put a few, few little nuts on the top. If you're allergic to nuts or have somebody in the house that's allergic, then be careful. But we're not, so we can, we can eat the nuts. So from time to time on Zenobia's channel, I will uh, put together some recipes and appear, get from the other side of the camera. I can do some pretty good pancakes and things like that. So in the future here, we'll see what I can do for you. All right. So we've used all of our cashew. We're good to go. All right. I'm going to set these in the oven. They're going to go at 425 degrees for 25 minutes. I'll be back in a minute. All right, everyone, look what I got. I got some scones here that they're done. Uh, 425 degrees for about 25 minutes. They're good and brown, ready to go, still warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and serve them out here on a little plate. Gonna have ourselves an afternoon tea here. All right, there you go. Blueberry vanilla scones. And we're gonna have an afternoon tea. This is for the queen. God save the queen. And 
everyone out there. I just want to remind you to uh, subscribe. Subscribe to Zenobia Beckley's channel right here. You see that? And also in the right hand side of your screen, or be in the left hand side of your screen, you're going to see a picture of Zenobia. Go ahead and click on that. Subscribe. There's also going to be a little bell that you can. Uh, if you click on that bell, that way every time she has a video out, you'll be able to see, and you'll be able to see the videos. There's a thumbs up showing that you like it. And then, finally, please share the video. Share these videos with your friends, whether they're in America, whether they're in Brazil, any part of the world. Share them everywhere. Uh, and we'll look uh, forward to seeing you the next time when you see Gringo in the kitchen.